G'day lads, welcome to the uh, the mini CR6 SE print farm. Woohoo! Cheers! Cheers! Cheers, right. Cheers to that mother... Uh, over the last, um, well, shall we say, couple of months, I've seen a lot of people sort of complaining about um, their CR6 and not being uh, not being 100% level. If you can have a look at this, they uh, they get a result like that. You know, you can see that it's uh, 0.6 out there and negative 0.544 out on the other side. And they, uh, they tend to freak out a little bit and they're going, oh, you know, is this right? This is way off. And, you know, you get all the CR6 purists out there that sit there and say, oh, no, no, the machine corrects for it and blah, 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 blah. And, and yes, that's true. It does correct for it. But um, in some cases, um, this is undesirable, right? Like for me, I, I print, um, you know, drone parts and pieces like that. And I want... I want 90 degree corners. I don't want, um, you know, I don't want something printed flat and then uh, it's been adjusted by, you know, if, if you were to take these measurements, you've got a millimeter difference between the two corners of the plate there. Um, and I, I don't want that. Like if I'm printing out a small fan governor or something like that, then then I don't want that sort of a, a gap in there because it uh, takes the weight out and changes angles and everything. So, so um, what I thought I'd do is quickly talk you all through um, what I do to uh, to level the bed and, uh, and get it properly done so that, yes, the machine can correct, but it's got to be correcting itself on a level surface, right? Um, so that's that's the most important part to me. So if you if you do run your bed leveling one day and you get you get a result like this, and you can see it's, it looks like the rainbow, it's very beautiful, but um, it's not the best for printing. Um, generally, the first thing to do is actually make sure that you um, your gantry is nice and level. And the way to do that, I'm sorry, I'm making this blurry. The way to do that is actually wind it up to the top and give yourself a bit of a gap there. And, uh, and grab yourself one of these bad boys. Ooh, wee. Grab yourself a metal ruler and uh, you basically just, you just plonk it on top like this and you just measure the distance. And what you do is you wind it up so that you come to like a, a good level. So obviously this is way too low, but if you're up around this mark, you know, wind it up so that one side is exactly on the 10, you know, the 10, 100 millimeter mark, or what is that in the US, I don't know, four inches or something. Who, who does that shit? But, um, but yeah, you, you wind it up so that you've got a, a, the same measurement, a good round number on one side. And then what you do is you measure the other side, and if it's slightly off, you um, you come around the back here, you undo these two little screws on the, on the uh, thread nut there and you literally just grab it down here and just give it a bit of a twist until you get the two exactly the same and then you just nip that back up and you go through your, your leveling process all over again now eight times out of ten I'm not gonna say nine that will resolve the issue and that's that's exactly what's happened here I've actually done this on purpose just to sort of show you what it looks like when it's not leveled and uh, and that will generally bring it back in for the two times out of out of the ten that uh, this doesn't work, just let me grab a seat here, gents. Oh yes, nice. You too, right, mate? Uh, right. So what 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 you need to do from there is check out the actual bed itself. Um, now the bed itself is supposed to be nice and level, and you know Creality did have done a great job. Let's be honest. The CR6 is an incredible printer, um, and they've bolted it all down using these um, these little you know plastic. Uh, let's say tubes they cut off a bit of tube and they run the they run the bolts down in between it all and if you uh, if you bought this printer and you've never pulled it apart there's just there's just you know m4 nuts that go uh, bolts sorry that go through the the lot and they sit underneath the glass under there the first thing to do is to take this glass off lift it off out of the way Ooh, here's one i prepared earlier too right and, uh, and just check these nuts and make sure they're all done up nicely. You know, I think uh, I think the printer actually does come with an Allen key set that does fit this. And just give it a little bit of a nip up, you know, go through each one and make sure they're all tight. You know, you can check, like if this was the case here, you can see that, you see that the top, where are we? The top left corner up here is uh, 0.6. So that one's, that one's high, right? So you would literally screw it down if it was loose. So just check for looseness and things like that. Make sure they're all nice and tight. If they're all nice and tight. Make sure there's no junk under here, you know? Make sure there's nothing sort of in between the 
in between the little um, the little lugs and the and the plate or anything like that. I mean, generally there's not, but you, you don't know. Maybe one of them's slightly cracked or something in shipping or, or you know, use. It's just it's gone a bit funny and it's just sort of sunk a bit. So just make sure that that's going on, and that it's all nice and uh, nice and level there. And finally, while you're under here, check your uh, your V-rollers under here. Make sure that they're um, they're nice and nipped up. You don't want them ridiculously tight, you know. You don't want no bullshit going on there. But but make sure that they're nice and nipped up. Basically, if you can grab this and wiggle it like this, and if it doesn't wiggle, like you you'll feel it. It's like a definite knock. If you can do that and there's no knocking, then you're good to go, right? But if there is knocking, there's little eccentric eccentric. Is that the word? Off center nuts they are basically. So if you tighten them, they they push the wheel against the actual v-groove and it's um it's pretty cool but uh but if you got them too tight they'll it'll eat the rollers away and if you got them too loose it'll be flapping around in the wind like a dunny door strong enough to lift those porta pots so you don't want that so make sure everything's nice and tight and uh, and go through your leveling process again now i'm not going to bother here because um that's currently out so i'll nip that back up when i'm finished with this video but uh but yeah that's that's what a lot of people see so Let's say you've done all that stuff and the bad boy still is uh, is warped and you, you just, you know, pull on your hair and you're like, two rights, mate, it's just not working, you know. What I can recommend you do from there is check out your plate. Now, you've got a couple options. You can either replace the plates or you can do what I did and uh, come across to this bad boy. And uh, you can see here I've actually got nuts in there. Now... The purists out there are going to be like, why would you do that? Why would you break your CR6 and blah, 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 blah. And to them I say, well, gents or, or ladies, this is a tool and I want it to work right. And if it's not working right, then I'm going to fix it. And uh, with my with my uh, Ender 5 Plus, it's got nuts on it. You know, it's great. And then it's got a bell touch. So what's the difference between this one and the CR6, honestly. It, it, the only difference is the CR6 was built to be you know, mounted underneath, and of course, this doesn't have a beetle touch, but it's doing the same thing, right? It's, a, it's accounting for the warps in the plate, which, for me, that's not good enough. I like to dabble in a little bit of precision. I'm familiar with the bubble, Morty. I also dabble in precision. <laughs> so, so what I did is, I'll just pull this forward for you to have a look. What I did is I actually took out all those little spaces in there, took out most of the bolts, and I've just got it mounted on four springs on each corner. You can see them there. These are just the standard springs. I think I got them from old Bangers, Banggood. And um, I'll be honest, these ones are actually a little bit too soft. Uh, I've got some silicon mounts coming, which I'll put them on. But then all I did is I, uh, I took a four mil drill bit and I actually just drilled out the thread in the four corners. Uh, I printed some little um, little washers. These are just you know M4 washers that I printed on on that printer actually, and uh, put them in there just because underneath there is uh, you know you don't want to damage that. So a little bit of plastic is always good. Um, and so then I just pushed the I just got extra sized nuts. So I think I grabbed the 35 mil nuts. These are I think 25s in them when they come. Grab you know four 35 mil nuts, the countersunk ones. Push them through and literally just bolt this on. And, uh, and Bob's your uncle. So you can see there that the clearance is good. Let me just come inside. It does, it doesn't, there's no modification needed whatsoever. That actually, that's just the angle if I push that back. You can see it completely clears it. Um, the only thing is you just gotta watch out for is, uh, and this is why the spaces are good with the springs, that uh, little motor at the back there, the little stepper motor, if you go too low, you'll you'll clip it when the, when the thing goes over it. So make sure you don't do that. But um, you've just got to be high enough. But yeah, put the put the nuts on, and uh, then you can adjust this bad boy however you like. So you can go through the adjustment process, hit adjust, and then if you see a you know negative 0.6 over here, well you just undo it a little bit. And then if it's positive over this side, you just tighten it up a little bit, and you just keep going. And you've got to be a little bit patient. You got to do that. But then you know once you get it done, shebang. You know what I mean? Like like I could again, I could tighten up the the front right hand side and get that down a little bit you know that's a little bit lower but you can see over there on the left hand side that's that's bang on it doesn't get any better than that right so so now instead of having you know like something like this where there's a full one millimeter gap from that side to that side and yeah it's straight but on the bottom there's extra weight not so shit and if you're developing spinning shit then you don't want that shit there so so this is nice and straight now 
Like I said, a lot of people are having a lot of luck with putting in silicon mounts. Instead of just having the four points, because some people think, oh, it'll warp the bed. I'll, I'll be honest, if this warps the bed, I'm just gonna replace the bed, I don't give a shit. But honestly, this, this is perfectly fine. If it's good enough for a Ender 5 Plus to have that massive thing with just four mount points, and this one, which is a 235 by 235, it's gonna be perfectly fine. Let's be honest, okay? Let's, let's not just freak out about it for the sake of freaking out. Oh, everything's crooked. Reality is poison. I, I want to go back. I hate this. What's his deal? So, silicon mounts. A lot of people put silicon mounts all through it. And instead of having the little, um, these little lugs in here, these little spaces, they just have silicon nuts. And they just, uh, silicon mounts, sorry. And they just tighten them down until they get it right. And then they just put the glass on and they leave it. And that's a good option too. L let's be honest, that's a really good option. You could just, you know, you nip up the screws to get it perfect. Once it's perfect, you know, you put the glass back on and away you go. If you're looking to beat the, the 0 0.0 whatever scale though, uh, I find having the nuts on here is important because the second you move the glass, you know, you're moving it by 0 0.05 anyway when you're putting it on and off. And, you know, just grabbing it and wiggling like that is enough to sort of change it. So, so you just got to be a bit careful there. But that is pretty much it. Um, that's what I'd highly recommend for you all. Uh, for me, I've, I've just modified this one. This one gave me the most grief. These two have not. These two are pretty good and they're nice and flat. But uh, look, honestly, I've ordered quite a few silicon mounts. I'm going to whack them in. Um, why not have the best of both worlds, you know, like... ¿Por qué no las dos? Why not have a, an adjustable bed and an adjustable, um, you know, self-correcting hot end? I mean, why not? It's, it's fantastic. Hope you had a good time listening to this, me, whatever it is, ramble on and shit like that. Hopefully it helps. If, uh, if you're having any troubles, you can message me or whatever, but um, just, just have a crack. You know, don't, don't be afraid of getting in and having a play with these things. I think to replace the bed, you look at maybe a hundred bucks, dollary dues. You know, like, don't stress. If you, if you really mess it up, you just get a new one and put it in.